do we think there's a general lack of understanding with people who are generally quite divisive and um they split opinion with the public they create controversy out of absolutely nothing and always try and goad people into a reaction why do they seem to be the ones who lack the self lack self-awareness the most never really understood that the reason why i mention this because there's this really interesting quite funny back and forth going on between um, six nine and boston richie right and boston richie has been in the news lately a lot well if you're following the urban hip-hop type of thing like i do you would have known that boston richie has been in the news because some other rappers out there have been exposing court documents and police reports about him allegedly snitching on some of his friends who were involved in some murders and other crimes and whatnot, which resulted, I think, in one of them going to prison for 15 years or whatnot. But for what we can see so far, I think there are two so far solid reports that he did snitch on people that he was familiar with. And then he got them obviously locked up because of the evidence, you know, contributed to them getting locked up for a long period of time, which you would classify as definition of snitching. For whatever reason, his side doesn't, you know, want to believe that to be the case. His team are fighting hard against it, which makes sense because Boss Richie's image entirely does depend on the fact that he doesn't snitch because he's quite an aggressive, you would deem it to be street um, rapper in that respect. And obviously most of his lyrics are sort of centered around that sort of thing. So having it be known that you are a legit snitch is probably going to be bad for business. So I understand on their side of things, do that. Boss Rich is going to have his way to deny it also, but he's doing it in a weird way. He's posted a picture recently of him holding up stacks of money or whatnot, showing off, which is always hilarious. Whenever someone calls you out, the first thing you do is say how much money and, you know, itches you fucked. And it's always really, really funny because that's obviously not what we're talking about. But clearly you feel so insecure that you're having to flex on the money without actually addressing the point at hand. But we digress. So 6 9 feels like he's been slighted. Because he feels like Boston Richie isn't getting the same level of attention and scrutiny that he was getting. He thinks he's had the same issue with Gunner and his alleged snitching. And he's kind of been on this one man campaign to convince everybody that everyone out there is as big as a snitch as he is, which is a fool's errand, really, because it's sort of like saying, hey, I'm not the only creep. There are loads of other creeps out there. It's like, yeah, but you're still a creep. So sit your ass down. So with the snitching thing, when it comes to 6 9 I feel like. It's one thing, the snitching thing, for you to have an issue with him for doing what he did. The main issue I have with 6 now when it comes to snitching thing, and it's somebody that's not attached to any of that sort of life in the slightest, just from an observer point of view, is the scandalous nature of it. That's the real part of it. That's, kind of, that's really hard to kind of swallow. Even if you're a fan of his, like, just how scandalous he was with the whole issue. He had no shame, no class, no remorse, no nothing in what he'd done. And you think back to how he was prior, and I enjoyed his music prior. I, I think I said on record on the podcast a few times that I liked his albums in the gym because they were like 30, no, I think they were like, maybe the max was like maybe 40 minute runtime on an album that he put out. And they were legit the best sort of music to get you fired and pumped up in the gym. So if I was going to do a WOD or I went to like a really big, you know, strength and conditioning workout for 40 minutes and I didn't really have want to have that many breaks. I just wanted to go in hard. I'll slap on a 6 9 album from start to finish and it will just get me pumped and ready to go. But it kind of came different. But the part of the reason why he liked it is because of the aggression, the sort of like the disrespect that he was coming up at it with every single record. And you saw it reflected in real life because he was legitimately running down on people. He was putting it on people. He was going to people's shows. He was saying the most flagrant things on interviews. Like he was legitimately going you know beyond and far and beyond and above to kind of demonstrate just how street and how down he was to get down with anything and what time you know he was on he was on he was on that that time from minute zero and you kind of appreciate it even if you didn't believe it you appreciate that energy that he was coming with so that framed a lot of his sort of identity then it obviously you know as you know everything kind of rolls out and the issues come to head and then he starts to snitch and the snitching thing for me was super super horrible because i remember one particular case of it was like the guy that he allegedly paid money to to put a hit to go and do a hit on flipping chief keith which you know thankfully didn't work or didn't happen the way it needed to happen and whatnot he ended up snitching on that guy and i was thinking to myself like how corrupt or how twisted is the america judicial system where you can put a hit on somebody you can snitch on the person you used 
for the assassination and then you get out before they do like how does that make any sense and he did to everybody else involved, right? He was in and around the rooms. Again, maybe you can you can blame Nine Trey Crips or whatever they are, or Nine Trey for essentially bringing him around when he clearly wasn't like that guy to be around those sort of conversations. But everything he eavesdropped on, everything he was in the midst of when it was happening, he reported on. And he essentially, if I'm not mistaken, got, you know, upwards of 10 people basically put behind bars, contributed to. And if that wasn't enough... He added other people that weren't even involved in the case. He started to talk about Cardi B's alleged gangs, gang links, um, Jim Jones. Loads of things were kind of, you know, involved in that whole shebang. And then obviously when he came out, he was unremorseful. He didn't want to go in witness protection. He started flaunting himself around there, saying he can't be touched. I'm a snitch, so what? Because I think the first time when he came out, actually, he was fighting against the snitch thing. Then he started embracing it. Then he started fighting against it. And I feel like whenever I listen to 6 ix talk, especially when he's on like Clubhouse or something, and he's with like Wack 100, it always feels like whenever Wack 100, you know, doesn't necessarily let him speak with that sort of bass in his voice about gangs and snitching, he kind of gets a bit offended, which is really strange for somebody who you would deem to be a serial snitcher to get offended when somebody calls him out who's actually associated a part of that lifestyle that now now you can never talk about this sort of stuff because of what you did and you're kind of xed out of it wherever it may be and i always found that hilarious but for me the main part i think is different from six nine with all these other people that i've been snitching is that fundamentally even when I liked 6 9 as a rapper and I liked him as a musician, he was never liked. He was never likable. People always hated him. Like, there was always this meme that would go around on the internet whenever a prominent rapper would die. People would leave a comment saying, like, oh, why doesn't this... Why did? Why couldn't this happen to 6 9 instead? Why take him? Why not take 6 9 It was a constant meme that was going around. I'm sure those sort of things got to 6 9 right? He, he, he acts like he doesn't, you know, feel anything and he's unemotional, but I'm sure those things definitely got to him, seeing people essentially wish on his death because they just didn't like him as a person. Um, and obviously when he, he snitched, it kind of obviously didn't help uh, people warm to him in any kind of way and his reaction to it wasn't the greatest either. But still, he doesn't seem to understand it and I don't really understand, and I don't really understand why he doesn't get it. So there's this um, post here I'm going to upload on the screen. So the post courtesy of DJ Academics where it looks like from 6 ix Instagram account, where he's taken a picture of the report or the snitch report, basically. And he said the following, I've never seen the whole rap game quiet. Everyone has something to say. Now people don't got voices or opinions about Boston Richie. And clearly he's upset about Boston Richie getting the kid gloves when he was attacked from left to right. He was included in every single song and people were basically going out of their way to chastise him and kick him while he was down. Whereas Boston Richie, people are basically turning a blind eye or similar to what was happening with Gunner. People don't seem to be ready and willing to kind of, you know, counsel them or say it's over because they generally maybe like them as people. They maybe think they're more gangster. I don't really know what the issue is. But for me personally, the fundamental issue when it comes to 6 9 is that he's just not likable. It's as simple as that. He's not a likable person. He never was. What he did was incredibly heinous. Um, he got people locked up that he legitimately took part in crimes with, which is absolutely crazy. Probably what Boston Richie did also. But that whole, you know, the optics of it don't look the greatest. And of course, Boston Richie then went out and replied himself. And he said the following on his, on his Instagram stories. The difference between me and you, 6 9 is I never told it on a nigger or put a nigger in jail. And I'm pressure tape out public housing too, nigger, whatever it may be. So, Clearly, they both don't accept that they're snitches. Boston Richie doesn't accept he's a snitch, and Six Nine doesn't accept he's a snitch. And I guess it's up to the consumer to decide what they want to do. Personally, I don't think it actually matters in the grand scheme of things. I think when you're a fan of somebody's music, um, especially myself included, I take the whole package as is. And if certain things are, you know, deemed to be not the way that I thought they were, or they're not the kosher, they're not authentic but the music is still good, I'm still going to listen to it because I'm always here for the music first. But there's no denying that if you do end up snitching, especially if you end up, I guess it's different if you end up just like still on that time because 6 9 hasn't really changed his temperament. It's not like he's come out and said, yeah, I'm about peace and love. He's still on whatever time everyone else is on. So just because he snitched doesn't mean he's not going to blow your head off if you try and approach him in real life. So that's clearly an issue but i feel like in some people's eyes especially the guys that these guys want to impress because that's the thing when you're a when you have these sort of gang affiliations and you're a well-known artist you clearly want to impress or um you know carry the favor of people who this sort of stuff means a lot to so 
if you do this and it gets out, those people aren't going to look at you the same way. And which is funny, isn't it? Because these guys probably have millions of fans worldwide who would love to see them perform in their small towns. They don't care about the snitching things, but these guys care more about people who aren't necessarily their fans and don't pay their bills or don't contribute to pay their bills or buy their merch or buy their albums or anything or so, you know, any type of way. So their kind of attention is really in the wrong place. But, you know, hip hop in you know, gang politics is something that's always been interwoven from the very beginning, the very onset of the genre. So it's not something that's going to be gone anytime soon. But I do find the back and forth between Six Nine and, and Boston Richie to be kind of hilarious, considering they both definitely did snitch. They both definitely can't be, um, you know, seen as the same level of gangster they were prior. Doesn't mean like they're both not dangerous. Doesn't mean that they're both not on go time. If anything was up. But still, you kind of, you kind of, you kind of have to give up um, speaking about certain things when you do get snitched on. But maybe that's what we live in the society nowadays. We live in a society, I think I've said it before, that we live in a society where everybody just wants everything. So they want the image of being a gangster. They want to also be able to snitch and not be called a snitch. And they also want to still have the ability to call themselves you know, um, 100% fire or whatever it may be, right? Um, because despite the snitch allegations, it's like, no, like sometimes your decisions that you make can take away from the thing that you built, you've built over a long period of time, history, right? Because I'm sure there are gangsters out there that can exist who have done hits on people who have snitched. You know, you look back to some of the organized crime syndicates, uh, the mob and whatnot, there are hitmen in there that have snitched and they've killed, you know, they've got like, you know, 20 plus bodies on them. It doesn't mean that that person is not dangerous. It just means that when he was, you know, put, when it, the reality situation came to him and he was faced with looking at double digit prison sentence and he wasn't able to see his kids and his family again, he decided, no, I'm going to see my family again. I'm going to snitch. But it doesn't mean that person isn't really with it. So it's a double-edged sword. But hey, for me personally, I'm not you know, I'm not gonna stop listening to Boston Richie because of the allegations, but I do find his um, back and forth with Six Nine to be absolutely hilarious. And I find Six Nine's utter unex I, I find Six Nine's refusal, complete refusal to accept that he's just not likable. That's why some people just want to wish the worst on him as opposed to other people. I find that really hilarious too, because you would imagine if you're someone like a Six Nine and you're a bit of a troll, you have the rainbow hair, you have all the funny tattoos, you make all these, you know, nonsense track records, you're always kind of doing all these stunts online to get people to go do into reaction to say something to you. You would imagine that you would be understandable. You you'd be more understanding as to why some people don't like you. But for some reason he doesn't and it is what it is.